At this time, we're going to observe the Lord's Supper. Jesus established this ordinance at the last Passover that he ate with his disciples. He gave them bread and said, take, eat, this is my body. Then he took a cup and gave thanks and said, drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for, the, for many for forgiveness of sins. Before we partake, uh, we're going to look at a passage of scripture in order to remember what Jesus accomplished when he died for us. And if you don't have a Bible, please raise your hand. Somebody will hand you one. And if you don't own a Bible, that is your, our gift to you. If you uh, take your Bible, please turn to Hebrews chapter 10, and we're going to look at verses 11 through 14. This is a passage which contrasts the sacrifices of Christ, the sacrifice of Christ with the Old Testament sacrifices which were offered by the priest under the Mosaic law. Notice the contrast as we read Hebrews chapter 10 verses 11 through 14. Every priest stands daily ministering and offering time after time the same sacrifices which can never take away sins. But he, having offered one sacrifice for sins for all time, sat down at the right hand of God, waiting from that time onward until his enemies be made a footstool for his feet. For by one offering, he has perfected for all time those who are sanctified. Verse 11 summarizes the offerings of, for sin under the Mosaic law. Every priest indicates that there were many priests. When the high priest died, another priest would take his place. The priest was ministering daily, offering the same sacrifice time after time. His work was never finished. There were new sins that needed uh, another sacrifice. The big weakness of the Mosaic law was that those sacrifices could really not take away sin. They pointed forward to the sacrifice which would take away sin. In contrast, Christ offered one sacrifice for sins, and that sacrifice is good for all time. His sacrifice satisfied God's wrath against the sins of his elect forever. And this includes all the sins of the elect, the past, the present, and the future. This should never cause us to fail to take sins seriously. Jesus took them seriously when he considered what he would go through when he bore the wrath of God against all of our sins. The warning against going on sinning willfully after coming to the knowledge of the truth is a caution against taking lightly the, the one sacrifice for sins. There is no other sacrifice for sins and to speak and to treat with contempt as is to become apostate and declare that you have never really been cleansed from your sins. After Jesus suffered for our sins, he said, it is finished. And he sat down at the right hand of God. His seated position is an indication that the propitiation for our sins was completed. He is not inactive there, though. He is eagerly waiting until the time that his enemies would become his footstool. And he will finally be able to fulfill his, the promise for the messianic kingdom. He also is interceding for the, his own, for his elect, as he is seated there at the right, Father's right hand. And he, we will finally be conformed to his own image. Verse 14 says that by one offering he has perfected for all time those who are being sanctified. Perfected here does not mean sinlessly perfect in the way we live. It means the offering has removed the penalty for our sins. There is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. 
and the righteousness of Jesus has been imputed to us. God remembers our sins no more. Hebrews 10, 18 says that where there is forgiveness of these things, there is no longer any offering for sin. Notice that verse 14 says that those who have been perfected are being sanctified. The right translation here is it's a perfect passive participle, are being sanctified. They, they, have, they have been in the state of being sanctified and they are continuing to be. In other words, we were not only given a perfect standing before God, but we are being changed into the likeness of Christ in our daily living. We also in Christ have a certainty of a future inheritance. Hebrews 9.28 says that Christ, having been offered once to bear the sins of many, will appear a second time for salvation without reference to sin to those who are eagerly waiting for him. Christian, as you participate in the Lord's Supper this morning, give thanks for the uh, one sacrifice which has redeemed you forever. Your sins will never be a cause of condemnation. God, by grace, has given you an eternal inheritance in the heavens which will never pass away. Also, be quick to confess any sins and turn from them that may be lingering, whatever may be lingering in your heart, we are not to continue in the sins for which Christ died. If you're here this morning and you realize that you've never really been redeemed by his one sacrifice, we ask that you refrain from partaking of the communion service. They are meant for followers of Christ. But consider that Christ's one sacrifice is the only means that God has of saving you forever. You can do nothing to save yourself. Our human condition by nature is such that we're unable to please God and only God's gracious work can bring us into salvation. Come to Jesus and call upon him because he has promised, he who comes to me I will in no wise cast out. Men, come in service and when your heart is ready, partake.